In this section of the study, we're looking at the other type of interest that we need to calculate for an oil and gas company. And by the way, this is the most important number of all of them for the oil company. It's called their net revenue interest. It's what they get to pocket out of production. It's what they get to keep out of production. Uh, and here's where we're going to start. Um, for us to calculate the net revenue interest of any oil and gas company, we first must do two things. The first thing is this. We must calculate what their gross working interest is. We'll never be able to calculate their net unless we understand what their gross is. The second thing that we have to do is we must calculate every one of their burdens. So uh, really, to calculate a net revenue is the most complicated number to calculate, but there's a methodology that we're going to use. We're going to calculate first a company's gross. We'll next calculate all of their burdens. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take those burdens, the interest that the company is responsible to pay out of their share of production, and we're going to subtract them from their gross working interest. I want you to look at this picture. That's a picture of a, a fictitious check. Uh, I want you to assume that it's your check. This is going to a person named Jane Harper. So I guess the assumption is that you're Jane. Uh, what this check does is similar to what we see in oil and gas interests. It's going to set out different types of interest in her check. I want you to look at the top of that check right there. And it shows us what her gross is, what her gross pay is. By the way, she didn't make much during that pay period, only $452. But that's what she made. The question is, does she get to keep that much? Well, if you've ever looked at your paycheck, you know the answer. No, she doesn't get to keep that. There's a difference between a person's gross and a person's net. That's true for an oil company. They have their gross number and they have their net number. You know what the difference is? It's all this stuff in between. In, in the paycheck scenario, it's called deductions. You see, the truth is that Jane has to pay those deductions. In many cases, they're statutory deductions. She can't waive them, like Social Security, like federal income tax or state tax. She has to pay them. They're not going away. Guess what? That's true for an oil company, too. They have their gross number, but there are these deductions. We call them burdens in the industry, but they're interest that we have to pay. Look at the third area here in the paycheck. It's Jane's net. It's what she gets to keep. And what we're going to be calculating today in this video clip is a company's net revenue interest. But before we do, again, look at the paycheck, and you tell me, of all of the numbers on that paycheck, what's the most important number of all? Is it the gross? Is it the deductions? Well, you know what the answer is. It's the take-home pay. It's what she gets to pocket at the end of the day. It's her net. Do you know what? For any oil company that's trying to make a business thrive in, the, in uh, today's economy, the net revenue interest is the most important number for all for them, too. But I want to ask another question. Let's assume that your company, your Jane, your company had just hired a payroll person who didn't really know how to calculate math very well, and that person made a mistake when they calculated some of the deductions, would that affect your take-home pay? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, here's the point I'm trying to make. When we calculate net revenue interests, if we make a mistake anywhere before we get to the net, it will affect the net revenue interest. So my task is not only to show you how to calculate the net, but I'm going to show you how to do a check and a balance so that uh, you can determine that you haven't made a mistake. Let's assume that Sunrise Oil and Gas has taken a lease. The lessor's name is Homer Murray. Now, it's, it's a lease. It hasn't been included in a unit yet, and Sunrise owns 100% of the lease. 
their gross working interest in the lease is 100%. Assume that Homer Murray leased for a 12.5% royalty and that Sunrise Oil and Gas gave their geologist a 5% override. Here's the question. What percent of every dollar that goes to Sunrise do they get to keep? Well, the math is going to be pretty simple. We're going to take their gross working interest. We're going to subtract their burdens. They get to keep what's left over. In this, key, in this case, out of every dollar that comes to Sunrise, they get to pocket 82 and a half cents on the dollar. I want you to keep that number in mind because we're going to come back to that number when we do the check and a balance. But first, what we're going to do with this 80-acre lease is we're going to include it, pool it with other leases to form a drilling unit. So in this case, the 80 acres has been included in a 320-acre unit. Let's see if we can calculate everybody's interest in this unit, or at least those tied to Sunrise Oil and Gas. Here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to calculate Sunrise's gross. We're next going to calculate the burdens that Sunrise have to, has to pay, and then we're going to calculate the net revenue interest. Look at what we're doing. Sunrise is bringing 80 acres to the table. It's been pooled into 320 acres. Their unit gross working interest is 25% of the unit. Let's calculate Homer's interest. He's bringing 80 acres that have been pooled. He agreed to receive only 12.5% of all production, so his unit royalty interest is 0 0.03125. We've not calculated overrides yet, but here's my question. Is the override that goes to the geologist tied to acres in any form or fashion? You know what? The answer is yes, they are. When Sunrise Oil and Gas assigned that override to the geologist, it was tied to Homer's lease. They were giving him a 5% override out of the acres on Homer's lease. So in a sense, the override is bringing 80 acres to the same unit of 320 acres, and the geologist is getting 5% of production. So the interest that goes to the overriding royalty owner in the unit is 0 0.0125. Now, let's calculate the net. Just look at that last line. We're going to do it one way, and then we're going to do a check and a balance. And the first way is this. It's the same thing that the payroll person would do in your office. They're going to calculate your gross, which is 0.25. Next, they're going to subtract all of your deductions or your burdens. There's Homer's burden. There's the geologist's overriding royalty burden. And guess what? That's what Sunrise gets to keep after everyone is paid, 0.20625. There's a difference between their gross of 0.25 and their net of 0.20625. Now here's the question. If we made a mistake anywhere along the line, would it impact the most important number of all? And the answer is simply yes. We need to do a check and a balance. And by the way, here's my advice. Always do a check and a balance. Even if it feels cumbersome, even if it feels like, you know what, I, I hardly ever make a mistake and I think I aced this one, I'm telling you with the propensity for people to make a mistakes, always do a check and a balance. Let's go back before the lease was pooled into 320 acres and what we determined was that Sunrise owned 100 percent of the lease and every dollar that came to them from that lease they were going to pocket 82 and a half cents on the dollar. So here's the check and a balance. Take the percent that they get to pocket from the lease 82 and a half cents on the dollar times Sunrise's gross working interest in the unit. Remember their gross working interest in the unit? It was 25% or 0.25. If you take that number times the percent they get to pocket, it needs to come to the same number 
that you had before, and in this case it does, 0 0.20625. I just have this word of caution. In many cases, Sunrise Oil and Gas is bringing more than one lease to the table. If, in fact, Sunrise has five leases and they all have different types of burdens, you're going to have to tweak this and you're going to have to calculate or do the check and a balance on each of the leases separately from one another. In other words, you can't co-mingle them and think that you're going to come back to the same number that you calculated by simply taking the gross and subtracting the burdens.